Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to today's children's message for today, February 7th, 2021, Unit 30, The Church Grew, Session 1, Philip and the Ethiopian from Acts 8. This is our new unit. Welcome to it. How many of you play soccer? And you know what? It's a new soccer team, and there's this new team forming. So I'm wondering, how can we get people excited to join this new team? Hmm, what do you think? Hey, I think you're right. We should let people know how great the team is going to be and how the new coach is really going to help us understand how to play and win. Hmm. Maybe we could send out flyers telling them the good things about the team and have a team meeting to explain how the team is going to work with the new coach. You know, that's a really great idea. And I think that once people hear how amazing it's going to be, they'll want to join the team. And that kind of reminds me about today's lesson. But before we get into our, our, our actual lesson, let's go over. We've got a new unit. So that means we have a new big picture question. You know, did you know that a church is kind of like a team? Everyone does different things and they all work together to accomplish one person. And you may think you know what <clears throat> what is that purpose. Well, we're going to learn a lot about Jesus. And that purpose is that we learn a lot about Jesus. We also pray to others for others to hear about Jesus. And sometimes we even go somewhere to serve other people and try to show them about Jesus' love, which being brings us to our big picture question. Why does the church exist? The church exists to glorify God by worshiping, worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. Isn't that why, what we do? We worship God, and we want to tell others about him. So, let's, let's kind of review what we learned last year. So, remember, we talked about the early church and how the church had some struggles. If you remember back here about our friend Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. And then we had other, other members who were arrested, mistreated, hurt, and even killed because of their faith. But through it all, God uses these struggles to strengthen and grow the church in various ways. All of this was done by the Holy Spirit's power. And that leads us to, the, to, to today's lesson, where we will learn about a time one man led another to Jesus. And our lesson is called, Philip and the Ethiopian, found in our Bible in Acts. And the actual passage, if you follow along, is from Acts <clears throat> verse 26 through 40. An angel of the Lord told Philip, who was a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road, there was a man from Ethiopia, and he was an important official to the queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to, had come to worship in Jerusalem, and now he was on his way home, and he sat in his chariot. And he sat in his chariot, and he was reading from a scroll. <clears throat> and it was from the words from the prophet Isaiah. So if you remember who was Isaiah was, we talked about him when we were talking about the Old Testament. And the Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot. So Philip wasn't there, so he ran as fast as he could up to it. And he said, do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, How can I understand unless someone explains it to me? And he invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip sat with him. And the official was reading these words from Isaiah, which said, He was like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly, and his life is taken away. 
And the official asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? You know who Isaiah was talking about? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah. So Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled down the road, they came to some water. The official said, what would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. So then the official told the chariot driver to stop. So he and Philip went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. And the official continued home and he was very happy. And that brings us to our application. You know, sometimes I feel like the Ethiopian when I read the Bible. I don't understand the particular passage that I'm re what it means. And you know what is really reassuring is that when I don't understand what I read in the Bible, I can ask my Sunday school teacher, a classmate, a pastor, or another person in the church to help me, and God will send someone to help me understand what the Bible means. So in our lesson today, Philip told the man that Isaiah was a prophet. And do you remember what a prophet is? Think hard. Do you remember what a prophet is? A prophet was someone who received a message or a vision from who? From God to share with others. And Isaiah was one of those prophets who shared a lot of messages about who Jesus would be. And Philip helped the Ethiopian to understand what that message meant. What is the good news about Jesus? I bet you know what it is. The good news, as we've been learning, is the best news in the whole wide world. It is that Jesus is God's son. He came to earth as fully God and fully man, and he lived a perfect life. And then he took the punishment for our sins and that, and that, so that if we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, we can be saved and we can live with him forever. Praise God because the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian believed in Jesus after Philip talked to him. And then he was baptized. But you know what? Baptism isn't what saves us. But it's a way that we can show others that we believe in Jesus. And then the Ethiopian after that, the Ethiopian went home happy after he was baptized. But it's, it was the Ethiopian's belief in all that Jesus did that is what saved him. So now let's talk about our Christ connection. <clears throat> it's really awesome because Jesus won. He is the champion. He won over sin and death. It has no chains on us. It can't keep us from God. Because Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like Isaiah said in the Old Testament. So everything in our Bible, everything from the Old Testament to the New Testament, always points to Jesus. And the Ethiopian man thought that the Old Testament was only talking about Isaiah, but it was really talking about Jesus. And God sent the Holy Spirit to help believers know how to live. And the Holy Spirit can help us know what to do, what to say, and what to think. The Holy Spirit helped Philip to know that the Ethiopian official needed his help. And Philip just did what the Holy Spirit led him, led him to do. So when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to help us too. Now, let me show you something that might help you remember about this lesson. So, what would you do if you don't understand something in the Bible? What would you, what would you do? Remember, you can ask others to help you understand it better. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pull some things up and I want you to think about what all these items have to do together, okay? What is the purpose for it? So 
I have this covering. Hmm. Kind of a covering for something. I have this hat that I would wear when I do this. That I might wear. Can you got any ideas of what I might be doing? And then I have some tape. Hmm, what would that be? What can all this stuff be? And I have, I have an old rag here. Oh, one of my old, oh, my old rag left, disappeared. I have a rag here. It's not real close, but I have a, ra a rag right here. Then I have this, at this screw that I use to open things. And I have this. Oh, you guys know what this, this is a paintbrush, so you know what it is. And then I have this, oh, this big can of paint. So what do you think I'm doing? So how can these things be used together? Hmm, think about that. But there are plenty of times when we don't understand something in the Bible, and if we look at it one piece at a time, we might not know how it all fits together. But God gives us the Holy Spirit or other believers to help us understand what we read in the Bible and how to live more like Jesus. It was kind of like all these things, all of these things, kind of by themselves. We didn't, this could be, what could this be used for? But when I show you all these things together, you know that I am going to be painting a room. So I put the tarp on the ground. I take the tape and tape up the things that I don't want the paint to go around. I wear my hat, my hat so I don't get paint all over me. And then I have the paint and the paintbrush. And that's how we know that it all makes sense when we bring it together. It's kind of like it's the same way when others help us understand the Bible, like Philip helped the Ethiopian. When we bring people together, they help us understand it. When we talk about it, when we hear it from our teachers. So... We may only understand a small part of the story, but when others come along and help us understand more and more details, then we can see the whole picture of what God is trying to tell us. And you know what that whole picture is, that he is the only one that saves. Right now, let's go to our new Bible verse. So this is our Bible verse for this month. Oops. Uh-oh. Ah, sorry. I grabbed the wrong Bible over. That was last week's Bible verse. Well, I'm not going to show it to you, but I will read it to you. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is, in everything he might be preeminent. And that's from Colossians 1.18. So in order to understand what this verse means, we need to first understand what it means to be preeminent. Preeminent means surpassing all others, very distinguished in some way, being above or superior. So we know from this that the he is Jesus. So he is the head of the body of the church. So that means Jesus is the, is the head of the church. He was in the beginning when, he, remember he was there for creation. He was the firstborn because he was, he was the firstborn to be dead and resurrected and sit at, at God's right hand. And in, that in everything he might be superior. He might be above all things. So he, Jesus is the head of the church. He was there from the beginning of time and was the first to be born again. And in everything, Jesus is superior. Okay, boys and girls, let's, let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sin and for raising him from the dead. Thank you for the gift of salvation, for the Holy Spirit's help to help us share the good news of Jesus Christ to those around us and to help them understand more about you. Lord, thank you also for the teachers and the friends that you give us to help us understand the Bible better. So Father God, we lift this up to you in your son's most precious name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.